You are listening to Exploring Sacred with your host, Denise Iwana Francisco, on the Temple Within Radio and Digital Media Network, giving voice to the sacred. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful Wednesday, a beautiful new day in your life. An opportunity to begin again or an opportunity to keep on going the way you're going, hopefully toward reaching your dreams, your goals, your abundance, your authentic self, joy, all of those wonderful things that we uh, sometimes hold as dreams in our lives. We dream to be joyful. We dream to be abundant. We dream to be happy or whatever it happens to be. Well, today is the beginning of a new day and an opportunity to bring our dreams to life and to begin to understand our dreams and what it is that happens in our dream time and how some believe, as I do, that even in these waking hours, as you're listening to my voice and I'm with you wherever you happen to be around Grandmother Earth, we are living the dream. We are walking in the dreamscape. Good morning, Janet. It's good to have you on board. It is afternoon where you are in the beautiful United Kingdom. And uh, wherever you happen to be, welcome to the dream, this life, your dream, this amazing opportunity to exist in a place that our soul has chosen to exist, a place that our soul, I believe, has chosen to experience in order to understand what it means to live a human life. Good morning, Nikki Jorgensen up there at the beautiful Heartful Art Studio in Big Rapids, Michigan. Dreams, the dreamscape. Dreams come in many forms. We dream things into being. You know, this morning, just before the show went on, I was notified that my foundation, Gathering Thunder Foundation, has been uh, nominated for a Rosalind Jaffe Award. And... What that means is that this dream that came into being called Gathering Thunder Foundation, right, is potentially going to be awarded up to $100,000 or one of two $25,000 awards for groups of people that help to better the lives of women and children around Grandmother Earth. So I'm very honored to receive notice that this morning we were nominated for a Jaffe Award. Sometimes bringing our dreams to life is something that begins as a seed in our thought, in our mind. Perhaps it's part of our soul's avocation and part of the seed that we come in here into this human life with, the seed of understanding that our soul is going to lead us one way or the other and we're going to bring a dream to life. In other words, we're going to to bring something that is in the current moment non-physical into the physical world. We dream things into being. And what about those dream times? What about those daydreams? What about those thoughts that lead us from the unseen into the the seen world? Those things that we can only imagine or hope or, or pray that come to light. What about those dreams, the daydreams? Well, they're very alchemical. Our daydreaming, our thoughts when they are aligned with forward movement. I mean, it's one thing to sit and think all day and and ponder and muse and pray and all of that. Though That's a great sort of thing to do. However, if you really want some alchemy of bringing a dream to life, when you are having these thoughts and musings and visions of what could potentially be and become, you know, whether it's with ourselves or something in our community, a way of life, changing the way that we live, changing our thoughts. We dream about it. We think about it. What if? What if? How do I make that happen? Well, taking the first step toward making that happen is always an even better way to go. And that is putting some locomotion behind the motion, right? Making the rubber meet the road, as they say, in bringing our daydreams, our visions our thoughts to life. There's an amazing thing that happens when we have a dream, a thought that we wish to bring to life, a vision 
that we wish to bring to life. The moment that we begin to take the first step toward that, all of a sudden the entire universe aligns itself to help make that happen. And if it's a dream that's not to be brought to life in a current moment, right right on the spot, because sometimes we want it to happen right now or yesterday would have been better, the universe will conspire to show us that the door is not yet open to that opportunity. And that doesn't mean that we're to give up. Sometimes it simply means that we need to sit with it a while longer. We need to be with it for a while longer and allow allow the unseen world and the seen world to begin to weave the reality into being. Sometimes we give up before the miracle occurs, as they say. And so I urge any of you that are listening to the show right now that you're thinking to yourself, you know, it's time for me to bring that dream to life, to reach that goal, to make that happen. Understand that if it doesn't happen right away, doesn't mean that it's not ever going to happen. Perhaps the universe is saying, maybe you need to sit with that a little while longer, maybe to refine it, maybe to give it a once a once over one more time and allow the universe, your guides, guardians, angels, and allies, the creator of all things, to bring into alignment all that needs to come into alignment to weave the unseen thought into the seen world so that it's beautifully anchored in both places. So that it's beautifully anchored in both places, the seen and the unseen in our physical world and in the world of our soul, in the world of light, love, and spirit. Good morning, Carla Jo. Hey, Katie Battle. Good morning, Cousin Johnny. <laughs> yeah, I, well, thank you for that, Carla Jo. I'm very excited to have been nominated for the Roslyn Jaffe Award. And when I say I, it's the, the accumulative I of every volunteer, every donor, right? Every person that has ever helped to bring Gathering Thunder Foundation to life and all of those that we serve, all of the women and children and men that we serve around uh, Turtle Island. So thank you for that, Carla Joe, and thank you for your part in Gathering Thunder Foundation. Um, and its success in being able to help others. What a beautiful thing. There's an amazing thing that happens when we lie our, lay our bodies down to rest, when we decide we're going to take a nap, when we decide that it's time to rest our body, to rejuvenate, to take a deep breath in the dream world. When our physical body is resting, that means that our spiritual body, mental, emotional, soul body has an opportunity to travel where our physical body cannot. And it also means, I believe, that those in non-physical realms have an opportunity to visit us, particularly when our physical body is not prepared for a visitation, not ready for a visitation, not attuned for a visitation, or perhaps is afraid of visitation. Visitation from whom? I think that we can all agree that the unseen world is alive. It exists in many layers, in many realms, from light, color, and sound, and silence, to the realms of mythology, the realms of the angelics, of our spirit helpers, of those that we love who have gone home back to the creator's love, having walked the hero's journey known as a human lifetime. It's been my experience in 56 years, frankly, that the unseen world is oftentimes more alive than the seen world. I believe that there are more walking dead in the seen world than there are in the unseen world. There are a lot of people who are afraid to live. There are a lot of people who are afraid to live who they came here to be. The fear of judgment, you know, so many fears, and we've talked about that on other shows. And so there are opportunities when our physical body is resting and not worried about what the neighbors are going to think or what the family is going to think, or, oh my goodness, what if the, the ladies at the country club find out that I have these amazing dreams and hopes and wishes that perhaps are not in alignment with theirs. 
The soul body, the spirit body, the mental emotional body when we are sleeping is free from the confines of our human condition, or I should say human conditioning. However, if you are a human that's also a modern day mystic or at least open to the idea of visitations, well then our dream times can certainly be fruitful and educational, inspirational. It's during the dream time that those in the unseen world, maybe we've known them, maybe we've known them, but we don't know that we've known them, can come to visit. And we have the ability to visit them. We meet in the middle. Some call that being a medium. Some call it being on the bridge between here and there. Some call it the Milky Way, right? or the wolf's path. There are many ways of describing that place in between where we meet. When we're not encumbered by worrying about groceries and cleaning the house and all those other things, people that are giving us troubles, or just, you know, the, the joys of being alive, we can have communication. It's a very real plane of existence, the dream world. And I often say to people, you know, when you get up in the morning, well, for me, the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I greet the day and I'm grateful for the day. I am. I'm grateful for every day, even when there are some days that just frankly are not so great. I'm grateful for the day because I'm grateful for an opportunity. I'm grateful for an opportunity to do something different or to do it all over again. It's up to me. And then, as most of you know, a nice big hot cup of coffee starts to brew as I'm letting the dog out and I'm feeding the cat and all of those good sorts of things. And then I get dressed and get myself ready to go to work. This work, work with clients, work with classes at the school. So there's a great amount of care that goes into preparing for my day. But how often do we really think about what we're doing to prepare ourselves for the dream time, the dream world? Well, you know, ladies, we may take a bubble bath or shower and then put on our face creams and our body creams and our lotions and, and do all of those sorts of things. And guys, you know, you may take your evening shower and... Uh, get ready with a really good book or watch a show and get ready for dream time. But what about preparing our other bodies to enter into the dream world? So we've prepared our physical body. We're cleaned up, got our ointments and all of that stuff on our body to go to sleep. But what about our emotional body, our mental body, our spiritual body? How do we prepare those? And who are we going into the dream world with, I ask people. Who are you going into the dream world with? In the morning, I know who I've aligned myself with for the day. I know that in the physical world and in the spiritual world, I align myself. But what about our nighttime? How often do we think about other than that prayer, frankly, that I find rather scary? You know, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Really? Really? That's kind of scary to me. It was scary as a kid, too, so I didn't say it back then either. I switched it up for myself. If I die before I wake, really? Oh, my goodness. I think there are nicer ways of saying that. At least for me, that's my own opinion about that nighttime prayer. So I wrote a book of prayers and incantations that includes one about entering into the dream world. Because when we enter into the dream world and we're prepared for that, it's less likely that we're going to have a night terror or a nightmare. Night terrors, those of you that are listening because your children or maybe you suffer from nightmares or night terrors, perhaps what's happening is that the universe is saying to you, your soul, spirit, creator is saying you need to prepare yourself better for the dream time. Maybe you need to prepare your grandchild's dream time or your child's dream time better for the dream world especially with little ones that suffer from night terrors, it's because I believe they're not prepared. As parents and grandparents and aunties and uncles, we make sure that we dress them up in snow suits and sunscreen and all of that when they get up to go out and play during the day. But what do we really do for them? 
before they go to sleep. Well, maybe we say prayers with them. Maybe we read a book to them. But what about as our children are learning to go to sleep at night for themselves, we teach them to invite the angels of light, the creator, you know, Jesus, the Buddha, whoever that happens to be in the realm of ascended teachers and masters, to accompany them into the realm of the dream world or maybe a beloved ancestor. Thank you, Grandma, for helping me in the dream world. Thank you, Archangel Michael, Mikael, Urael, Raphael, Gavrael, Metatron, Raguel. Thank you for walking me into the dream world. Good, kind, and loving spirits of the west, of the north, of the east, and of the south, above, below, and the Wakan Washte, the good and sacred spirits of the, wa the world in between. Thank you for accompanying me into the dream world. This evening, I would like to have a night of rest for my body, a night of rest for my soul. Or perhaps the preparation is I'd like to, to talk to my ancestors. I'd like to speak to my ancestors, to learn from them. Thank you, good, kind, and loving ancestors for helping me in the dream world this evening or this afternoon or this morning to enter into a space of learning with you and help me to remember what it is that you've taught me. When we enter into the playground of life during the physical day, we are open to bullies, we are open to gossip, we are open to a whole myriad of sorts of things, joys and laughter and happiness. And we get to choose that and hopefully we have really good boundaries in our physical life, right? We cut the crap. <laughs> and so I think we do that more as we get older. We cut out those people, places, things, thoughts, and communities that do not nourish our soul. And as Carla Jo says, we release ourselves from them as well. So that we have good, stable boundaries in our physical life. Well, we need to have them in our dream life too. Thank you for protecting me, guarding and guiding me in the dream world. Thank you for protecting, guiding, and guarding me and my children. Heck, I do that for my own kids and they're grown adults. Thank you for protecting my children and guiding them safely and those they love safely. There are a lot of visitations that happen in the dream world, particularly after we've lost someone that we love. In other words, someone that has gone home and we feel their loss because it is a physical loss. I remember once somebody said to me, geez, Dana, it must be really nice for you because you can see people who have crossed over, so death probably doesn't hurt you the same way that it hurts other people. Well, and I guess that's an assumption that people would make based on the work that I do and who that I am, but quite frankly, the physical loss of someone that I love, including my four-leggeds, including, you know, some of the beautiful animals here in the enchanted forest that pass away is painful. It's just as painful for me as it is for everyone else, the loss of the, loss of the physicality. Conversely, the understanding that they are very much alive and unencumbered by this human lifetime does give me comfort. And yes, I do see them. I feel them, not all of them. I mean, there are some that move on and they don't reconnect. So if you're thinking to yourself, why is, it, why is it that my grandmother has never connected with me? Well, perhaps grandmother has moved on to a place where she herself is evolving and working through her human lifetime. And we don't know why. We don't, you know, some things in life truly are a mystery. But the adage, don't take it personally, applies here. So if we enter into the dream world and we call upon a particular ancestor, it may be that that ancestor is not available to us for a variety of reasons. Each and every one of us has this magnificent soul. What a gift. What a gift we have to experience life, even when times are dark. And sometimes we figure that when we shed this physicality, all of a sudden we're open to receiving uh, visitations from those that we love who are still on the physical realm who call out to us. And yet when we leave this physical body, I believe that we also have opportunities 
to gain further wisdom and understanding sorting through our human lifetime, which makes us sometimes not available to those that are asking for our visitation. And other times people receive visitations unexpectedly or they're shocked by a visitation, particularly those that grow up in households or communities that do not believe or are not taught about the fact that life goes on. It just goes on without a physical body. Oh, thank you for that, Janet. Of course you will feel lost. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Our ancestors, those that we love, who come to us in the dream time, remind us that we are always connected to them. Even if they don't visit for a while, or maybe they don't visit, it doesn't mean that we are not connected. Our ancestry, our DNA, our love is the connecting factor. That DNA of love, holy smokes, it's an astounding thing. The love that our angels, our guardian angels have for us, that is a love that surpasses all understanding. The love that our spirit allies have for us surpasses all understanding. It's part of the great mystery that some of us as modern day mystics wish to sort out, to walk with one foot in this world, one foot in that world, to experience both. Because frankly, if we don't experience both, a part of us dies. And if we're not living or facilitating our spirituality in the physical world, I, I often believe that our dreams, our daydreams, our night dreams, our visions can facilitate that. The great part is to facilitate both, right, simultaneously in a very balanced way. Hey, good morning, Donna King. Donna, if you're in Rome, I know that you are like way ahead of uh, the time schedule here, cousin. But if you could like text me later today, that would be great because I have a question for you about Granny King <laughs> um, that I think that you can answer. So um, I know that I sent that text yesterday. It was probably a weird time because you're on the Rome uh, schedule. Anyway, good morning. It's fun to have my cousins in the house. And that was all based on a dream too, by the way. The dream that our heart has. Our dreams sometimes are sent out by our heart and by our soul. And we, we're even unaware of it in our physicality, right? This dream that goes out. We want to dream into being a connection to somebody. Dreams sometimes are the result of maybe we've eaten too much garlic or, you know, too many spicy foods and we can have distorted dreams. And this is where balance comes in. If we're living a balanced life, then our dream times happen to be more balanced. But if we're not in balance, um, in our life, then sometimes our nighttime dreams can also be unbalanced. What do I mean by that? If the last thing that we watch before we go to bed at night is a horror movie, then we're not going to go into the dream time in a balanced way. We might still be carrying fear or absolute, uh, oh my God, shock at what we've just seen on TV or for re reading a Stephen King novel right before we go to bed, that is going to influence our dream time because it's influencing our state of being entering the dream time. If we eat a burrito topped with onions and salsa and jalapenos before we go to sleep, then our body is also working on digesting all of that food as we are entering into the dreamscape. The reason I say this is because our dreams have the potential to bring us so much information and joy and understanding. No different than our day. What are we eating for breakfast? What are we watching the first thing in the morning when we wake up? What are we listening to when we wake up? The fact is when we're entering into the dream world, we are waking up to that world. How are we doing that? How are we doing that? If we really want to utilize our dream world in a beautiful way before going to sleep, prepare yourself. Do the work. 
go to sleep in a good way. Ask for guidance, guardians, and protection. And if we're with someone who cannot do it for themselves, we can ask on their behalf. Sometimes people will say to me who have parents with Alzheimer's or dementia, you know, D, uh, their dream times are horrific. And sometimes even during the day, all of a sudden they're startled by a reality that I can't see. Well, no, because I believe people who have dementia, Alzheimer's, any of those sorts of things, head injury or trauma, are walking in two worlds. And how do we prepare them for that? How can we assist them in that? Well, for most people, there's an understanding of guardian angels, right? Those beings of light, those messengers of light, Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael. Most people understand those four. We can invite them. We can invite them. Sometimes when we go into the dreamscape and we've prepared ourselves and we find ourselves in what I call sometimes celestial battle, actually what we have entered into is the realm of non-physical spiritual training. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, geez, Dana, before I go to sleep at night, I sip chamomile tea, I'm, I'm ready, I'm prepared, and I go into the dream time and I find myself doing battle or I find myself in an uncomfortable situation, I'm clearly a failure. No, you are not. Perhaps what you have entered into is the dream time mystery school, the school of higher learning, the school of higher wisdoms. And when we enter into the dream time mystery schools or the school of higher wisdoms on the higher astral planes and divacanic planes, shushuptic planes, uh, etc., we are not going to take a test as we do at university here on the physical plane. Those tests come in spiritual ways. Our metal can be and will be tested in the non-physical plane. So please do not feel as though you have been a failure if you have entered into those realms only to find yourself dueling with another being or feeling uncomfortable or tested because you are. And you can ask to have a night off for that, from that, by the way. I encourage everyone that finds themselves being tested or going through spiritual rigors in their dream time to understand that perhaps your metal is being tested, your mirror is being polished, right? Your sword is being honed. <laughs> hey, Julie. Okay, that sounds good, Donna. Thank you. Hey, Rob. Julie Fortino. My dream world has been a free-for-all recently. I need to be more intentional with my dream time. Yes. Yep. Yes, you're welcome, Janet. Yes. Entering into the dream time consciously. Our dream times are so beautiful. They can be harbing harbingers of what is to come, of what is to come. You know, all of those years ago when I had that dream of my dad, the Sarge, in his finely pressed military dress greens, sitting next to me and looking at me and saying, Denise Lynn, it's time for you to meet somebody. And I said, okay, daddy -o, you know, who is it you want me to meet? And he pointed across the table to a man it was like looking in a mirror for me, only his skin was much tanner than mine. And he was in dress greens and he said, this is your father. And this is the part that I wanna to talk to you about, Donna, uh, when you have time. And standing behind my father, Billy King, were three women. And one of them is uh, my grandma King. And then there were two darker skinned women that were standing behind him. And he said, these are your grandmothers. You're going to be meeting the women in your family on this side of the family. And I, I love you and I'm here for you. And focus on what it is that you're going to learn from the women, the ancestral women. That was seven years ago and it was only a month ago, a month and a half ago that my cousin Danielle forwarded to me the exact photo of the man that I saw in that dream. 
And when I mentioned it to the Sarge, he said, oh my goodness, so honey, that dream that you had, it must be that something is, is getting ready to happen for you. And clearly your dad, your father was also in the military. Yeah, dad. And about six months ago, having a dream of a little boy that looked very much like me. And in the dream, I vividly remember crying because I was so happy. And this little boy looked at me and he said, Dana, I'm your brother, Danny. I'm your brother. And I looked at him and I said, well, you look like me. Actually, you look a little bit like Dane, I would say. And he said, yeah, I come to visit you. Is it okay that I come to visit you, Dana? And I said, of course, you're welcome to come and visit me. I'm curious though, how old were you when you died? You're awfully young. And he looked at me and he said, I was really little, but I'm okay now. And I'm glad that I can come and visit you. I said, you can come and visit me anytime. And I woke up crying as I did with the dream about my father because it was an, an intimate dream time that I knew was happening for a higher reason and that it was real, that these were real people who had once lived here in the physical related to me. And sure enough, last month when I got to Alabama and visited my mother's grave, Unbeknownst to me, because I had only ever seen a photo of her headstone, was a smaller headstone right next to hers. And it was a headstone, a marker of a child, a boy child, that died the same day that he was born. And Todd looked at me and he said, D, you better be ready for this one, because I was still farting around by the car. And I walked over and he said, well, here he is. And I said, well, there he is. The dreamscape, when we understand it as being a real place, just as this landscape is, also a dreamscape, we're always living the dream. Sometimes our body is moving, sometimes it's not. Living it with intention, the physical dream, the non-physical dream, living it with intention. What are your intentions? Being awake, being aware, being consciously awake and aware that we are always learning. Opportunities to learn are always around. What do we see? What do we take from it? What are we to learn? Not all learning can be done on the physical realm. Sometimes we can go to a class, we can go to a workshop, we can go to a weekend. David Sturkin and I are getting ready to spend four days down in Decatur, Georgia at um, a workshop on ancestral healing, healing bloodlines, which for those of you that are adopted, um, you can understand the need for that, right? I think that it's, it's a beautiful, good thing for anybody to go through ancestral healing and to facilitate that, which is part of the work that I do, to understand how others do it, to be with it, to participate in it, to learn how it is that our ancestors speak to us in our dreams, both the waking and the non-waking times of our lives learning. But not all of the learning that will go on in those days down in Decatur are going to happen in the physical realm. They can't because why? Our ancestors, well I have a few ancestors that are here in the physical realm yet, but most of them of course have passed on, which means that we are working in the dream well realm. And we can consciously enter the dream realm while we are awake, you know, through ceremony through meditation, through journeying. There are many ways that we can enter into this and enter into it in a good way in the physical world and in the dream time world. And as you know, I don't do any workshops, take any of them very lightly. I don't participate in other people's ceremonies lightly. And yesterday I had a great big long conversation with my brother Guy Dullknife telling him about this trip that I'm taking to Decatur. 
and talking to him about my biological father, who was also a Vietnam veteran. And having a long conversation and discourse about that dream world and the world of spirit and what I'm walking into in that and how I facilitate that in the medicine way in a good way when I get back. How do we work with these things? Even if we're going into a journey or a meditation into the dreamscape, the non-physical scape, how are we doing it? Are we doing it with integrity? And so my conversation with Guy yesterday was about, you know, I'm going to this place and I'm doing this work. And he told me, you know, what he recommended in way of preparation and what I needed to do when I got back and what I would do for people going forward who come to me perhaps for ancestral healing in the INEP or the sweat lodge. What are the medicines? What is the protocol? How do we go about that in a good way? That's the importance of dreams. They're sacred. And sometimes they're just funny. Have you ever woken up from a really funny dream? I love it when I literally wake up in the middle of the night because I'm laughing so hard because something so fun and funny is going on in the dream time. That is the best feeling to wake up laughing and then going back to sleep. Sometimes the dream world can become the 3D world. For those of you that enter consciously in, into the 3D world of dreamscape and you bring it out here into the, or I should say the unlimited <laughs> dimensional scape of the dream world and all of a sudden it appears in the 3D here. While we're awake, we think, we're still in the dream and yet our body is sitting up and awake. How does that happen? Well, that's the alchemy of the seen and the unseen world and our guides and helpers in that landscape. I remember one time not too long ago working with Iktomi, Grandmother Spider, in my dream time and I woke up and there was literally, I could see the spider web over the bed. And I could see her on the web. And at first, when I saw her with my physical eyes, it scared me a little bit. And I woke Todd up. Right? That's how deep the dream time can be when we learn to work with it in a good way. When we learn to walk between both worlds, we're so much more than this physical life, right? So much more. Dream into being. Next month, I'm going to be flying to Florida to meet my cousin Corey and my cousin Johnny for the very first time. That's a dream coming into being. That's a beautiful dream coming into being. A friend asked me, so what was it like to touch the skin for the very first time of your father's people, of your cousins? What was that like? Profound, profound. Next month I get to hug them for the very first time. In this lifetime anyway, I know that our souls are old and we've known each other for thousands upon thousands of years. Dreaming that into being. Really, the onus of the show. Absolutely, Rob, even those not adopted can use that, yes. Ancestral healing. All of our ancestors have gone through some sort of trauma. Goodness, way back when even today, even today, our parents, grandparents, we're also ancestors, right? So if we can do our own work, we're helping future generations. I tell my kids, you can thank me. <laughs> they just look at me and shake their head. I said, you can thank me for all this work, this inner work that I'm doing. All of these things that are being brought up that rather than put them back on the shelf, I'm facing and walking through and trying to understand and come to terms with and walk forward in a good way. You can thank me for that and your children eventually can thank me and we just kind of laugh about it. But it's important work. And sometimes the work that's too painful to do in the physical world is completed in the non-physical world. Sometimes... Confronting something can be so painful and excruciating in the physical. We can say before we go to sleep, guardian angels, guides, ancestors, higher self, my soul self, God, help me to gentle, gently enter into the realm of looking at that, of dealing with that now gently, please. 
ripping the band-aid off doesn't work for me right right yet help me to gently come to terms to understand all of you know that in the in place of the word forgive i say understand i think that forgiveness comes fully when we can learn to understand or when we can understand we may not like it we may still abhor something but when we can understand another person's motives the motive of a situation of a happening then at least we can have understanding sometimes we need to gain that understanding in the dream world before we can bring it to the physical world that's where the work can begin and oftentimes we'll begin to dream about a house how many times do you dream about being in a house well those are the interior castle rooms right of your soul as saint Teresa of avila or avila would say you're visiting your interior castle in rooms perhaps that you've not visited that now maybe you're ready to dust the cobwebs off of that door handle and open up that door just a little bit to walk into that chamber of your memory of ancestral trauma of higher wisdom maybe that you're now ready to learn and understand and what about those dreams that we have about vast oceans or churning seas or lakes or maybe we feel we're drowning perhaps what our spirit is saying is that our emotions need to be dealt with our psyche needs to be considered earth wind water fire earth wind water fire the dreamscape is as beautiful or as hideous as it can be it's all in how we look at it i often think and some things just are just plain hideous so there is that some things are just plain painful. And when somebody says to me, Dana, it's so evil. I mean, where's the beauty in evil? Well, I'm still immature in that area in that sometimes evil is just evil for me. And I know that there are those who have moved far beyond my wisdom, far beyond my knowledge that can find a bit of nugget in some of the things that I find completely vile. For me, I don't find much of any beauty in an animal being purposefully abused or hurt right and i'm still learning about those things so for me some things are just abhorrent some things are just awful i don't find any nugget of gold in a child that is abused or a man or a woman who is battered i don't find a golden nugget in that Some things on the dreamscape and in the humanscape are just that, for me anyway. And maybe when I get older and I have more years on my odometer, I'll be able to look at those things and perhaps see something. So I'm not going to say that everything is always going to be beautiful on either side of the dreamscape. Some things are just ugly for me. And maybe that'll change. Sometimes I know that things can be harsh as an impetus for change. I think there's a difference between harsh and evil. But that's just me where I am now. Maybe one day that'll change. Right. I'm with you, Rob. The more I learn, the less I understand. Yes. And that is why sometimes our dream time, I believe, can bring to us situations or messages that perhaps we're not understanding because we're not ready to understand yet. We're not quite there yet. And perhaps that's another show. I see that I've already gone over time. I do enjoy my Wednesday mornings with everybody. With that, everybody, dream well. Dream well in your physical dream. 
Dream well in your daydreams and your night dreams. Dream well in bringing your dreams to life. You are a dream, by the way, brought to life. I believe that you are the creator's dream brought to life, brought to expression, to fullness, to beauty, that you are the light of the creator's dream, dreaming here on the earth plane. With that, everybody, have a beautiful, beautiful day. Get out there and shine your light as nobody else can shine it because it's yours, by the way, connected to all things, connected to me, connected to all of you and every living thing seen and unseen. Blessings be, everybody.